Hey, everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. So, Bill, <laughs> Bill's just saying I'm too short. That's why I had to lower the camera a little bit. But anyways, I'm not that short. But today's video is a good, it's a good one. It says this article is about recession outlook, job market close to danger zone and seen in downturns. So basically, I think that the job market is going soft. And the reason why I'm saying that is because I have I know a lot of acquaintances, friends, a few of them that are concerned about the jobs, and I know four of them that actually lost their jobs. Right. Okay. And I, I'm noticing that some people that are looking for jobs are having a harder time finding jobs, and so they're just staying where they're put. You know, like a lot of people that I know saying, oh, I'm going to leave this job, I'm going to go get another job at another place, but they're in the same industry, and they're just not hiring. So I do think that the job market is becoming soft. Do you think it is before we, we even read this article? Yeah, I would agree with that. It's it's definitely a little bit harder because, you know, while we've been paying attention to the economy and all that, I started poking around looking to see what jobs are out there just mm -hmm. for fun. And, um, you know, it, it is, it's it's not as easy as people think to just go and get a job right now. No, it's you know? not. I, th I think where we are reaching a danger zone mm -hmm. with jobs, and I think that's why they're going to consider cutting the rates in September. There's a, there's a chance they're going to cut it at a quarter percent or, or, or whatever they, they're saying. And I think it has to do with jobs. But in the meantime, let's, let's read this article. But in the meantime, do me a favor. If you like this kind of content, consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel and it's greatly appreciated. Bill, you want to start us off? Sure. The job market is the yellow zone as unemployment ticks higher, economist Claudia Sham said sham is the creator of a highly accurate recession indicator that's close to being triggered the jobless rate rose to 4.1 percent in june the highest level recorded since 2021 let's start, let's talk about that yeah. real, real quick okay here's a lot of things that people don't realize first of all the the unemployment rate one is a lot of people are getting second jobs right and they counted it as employment jobs, right as jobs <laughs> So they're not getting, you know, they, they need a second job just to be able to afford things. Right. Second thing is the government has been hiring a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And that's jobs also. Right. So between that and then people, some people are just dr dropping out of the house, out of the job market altogether. So mm -hmm. they're not even being counted. Right. So that 4.1%, 4, 4 I, I really don't believe it. But what do you think? Yeah, I agree, because people are have, mo there's a lot of people with two jobs. I mean, there a really lot of is. People. It, it, there, there really, really is. Um, and it's crazy that it's count. you know, they're counting those people twice, mm -hmm. in essence, to say, oh, look, we've, you know, they're, they're propping things up to make it look like the job market's better than really what it is. Especially during a political year. Right. Well, we all know that that's, there's motivation. Let's see what else they say. All right. The job market is edging closes to conditions typically associated with a downturn, according to the creator of a well-known recession indicator. Claudia Sham, a former Fed economist, voiced concerns about the state of the job market in an interview with Fox Business Network on Wednesday. Okay. So she's the creator of the Sham rule, the indicator that says a recession has started when the three-month moving average unemployment rate rises by half a percent point over the three-month average of the prior 12 months. So, okay, let's let's talk about that one. Okay. Okay. I think that we're in a recession. We, I think we just did a video yep. talking about are we in a recession or are we not in a recession, right. okay? I think we're in a recession. I know they're going to say, well, you know, you need three this and that and, or three yeah. negative months of negative gdp growth or something like that right but everybody i speak to are like saying no things aren't good you know the, i don't know i can honestly i'm thinking now it's, is anybody i could call and i know a lot of people from doing inspections and everything anybody I could call and say yeah that the, they will tell me things are great mm -hmm. i can't think of anybody right can you no no, I mean, can you guys think everybody. of anybody? Are you doing great? If you are, do me a favor, comment. Because if I ask everybody to comment that aren't doing great, which you're welcome to, there's going to be a thousand comments down there. <laughs> which we welcome the comments. Yeah, but. we welcome the comments. But yeah, I think we're in a recession now. 
So the indicator clocked in at 0.43% last month, meaning the unemployment rate is seven basis points away from triggering Sham's historically accurate recession rule. Oh, that's interesting. Interesting. So to be clear, the economy isn't on the cusp of a recession, Sham said. All right. Okay. Just Hiring remains strong overall, with the U.S. adding more than expected 206,000 jobs in June, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Kind of going back to what we were talking about before. Mm -hmm. I would love to know and confirm that, and I'm, I think we're right, that they're still counting people. A job is a job. It's yeah. just jobs filled, jobs not filled. Yeah, if we're, if we're wrong about that, do me a favor, comment below. Hiring, con uh, yep, but hiring conditions are in the yellow zone, she said, as a big uptick in unemployment could easily push the U.S. into a, a recession territory. All right, let's talk about that real quick. Mm -hmm. It's true because everybody's cutting back. You know, I know I'm noticing at restaurants less people. I'm, yep. I'm noticing at theme parks less people because you went there. Yep. Um, I'm noticing we went down to St. Augustine this past weekend. Mm -hmm. And we were worried it was going to be packed. And the place was empty on a Saturday and Sunday. It was yeah. literally empty, St. Augustine. Yeah. So, you know, we're like, all right, maybe it's the weather. It's, it's hot. But, but we go there so often that we know it. We've never seen it that empty. Mm -hmm. People are cutting back. So what happens? Okay, if they're worried about their job, they're going to cut back. And they're not going to buy that shiny new car. They're not going to right. buy, you know, go to that restaurant. They're not going to go to that theme park. Mm -hmm. They're going to just buy necessities. And people right now, you know, are even putting food, the basics, on credit cards. Look, right. Look at the credit card debt. It's never been this high. Right. I mean, we, people, the priority right now is the, the basics, food, shelter, you know, utilities, day-to-day -day life, clothes, school, things of that nature. And that's taking up a majority of people's income on a month-to-month -month basis. Yeah, okay. things have cooled off. We should be concerned, Sham said, later noting that the increased immigration, the slower than expected hiring in the state and local sectors could be contributing to higher unemployment. States are starting to cut back a little bit yeah. because the deficits, you know, even yeah. California has a huge deficit, but you know. But these things can all be part of good news. Interesting, in this okay. one. We're getting everything back in order and in balance and we can move forward. Okay. But if we have further weakening in demand for workers, we start to see layoff rates move up. We're close enough to the danger zone where you're moving into a recession, she added. Here's the hmm. thing, okay? Companies are there to make money, okay? Right. So in California, yes, I'm going to pick on California. It's, it's a beautiful state, but, you know, it has issues, in my opinion. The You raise, you go minimum, uh, for fast food to 20 bucks. Right. What do you think they're going to do? They're going to be like, okay, we'll pay 20 bucks. They're A, going to raise prices. Yep. So less people are going to go there and eat because they just can't afford it. Right. They're not going to lose money. Mm -mm. They, have a, they have a spread that they want to make. They have a margin they want to make. So they're going to be like, okay, we got to raise the cost of a burger $2 or $3. Mm -hmm. Or we'll just fire some employees. You know, and do the same job with less people. A combination of the both. Like or in the future, hey, we'll have robots do it. Well, I mean, it's that's you see this. This is the, these are the things that are happening. So I personally think that I know everybody deserves to make money. So don't beat me up on that. I do believe in that. Okay, but if you're forcing companies to pay you X amount of dollars mm -hmm. that you can't afford. The companies are just going to pass on the cost. Exactly. So the same people that they're trying to help, they're hurting. Right. Am it, I wrong? It, no, you're not wrong. And this is it goes back to this vicious cycle, right? So let's just use the fast food analogy. So you go up to whatever, 15, 20 bucks an hour for your, you know, uh, for an employee starting at a fast food restaurant. Well, now that's going to trickle. So think about this for a second. Let's say you're at another job, right? Mm -hmm. Just a uh, another more of an entry level type position. Right. Well, that job now pays more than what your position is, as maybe like an independent contractor or something along those lines for, you know, in healthcare as an example, right? Like, uh, like a CNA or an LPN or something. And now they have to increase their rates. Right. Because everybody's got to increase their rates. And then even let's go to entry level emergency services you know, to more of a, a skilled labor type position. 
Well, you're paying $20 an hour, and that's $2 an hour less than what a police, an entry level police officer or firefighter paramedic makes. Right. And like, why would I go do that job when I can just go do this job? You know, it, it, and it's, a, not, it's just, I, it needs to, it, uh, it constantly, it's a leapfrog and it continues to go. Just throwing, again, back to the same thing, throwing money at things isn't the answer. No, it's not the answer. The jobless rate remains historically low, but inched steadily higher over the past year. Unemployment rose to 4.1% last month, the highest level recorded since 2021, according to Fed data. I don't think that's an accurate number, mm -hmm. but okay, let's go with their number, 4.1. Okay. Okay, but I think after the election, things are going to hit the fan. I don't care who's president, but I think that's going to, I think that's going to edge up. Some forecasters have predicted job losses could rise in the coming months. Companies could remain, continue to struggle financially aimed at high interest rates, which could push the unemployment rate to 5% by the end of the year, mm -hmm. economist David Rosenberg has predicted. So if it goes to, unemployment goes to 5%, that's less people going to the store, that's less people going to the mall, that's right. less people going to out to eat. Out to eat, right. It's a trickle effect. So less people in your restaurant, you don't need as many employees. Right. And then, you know, it's, think about how that goes. So you've got less people in your restaurant, which means you need less food, less employees, which means less orders to the suppliers, less deliveries coming in from the truckers, less imports coming into the country. It's just, it's a constant cycle. And it's, it's sometimes it's hard when you're just looking at it from yourself where I just, like, oh, I just went to this restaurant over here. Mm -hmm. But it's not just that one restaurant, this is, think about how many restaurants we have here in Pinellas County. There's thousands upon but, thousands. But not only that, but the quality of food. They're, down, they're like, oh, you know what? We have to pay these employees X amount of dollars. We have less business yep. because unemployment rate went up. Yep. So instead of getting that cut of meat or whatever, the best quality, you know, the quality of food is going down yep. or they give you less portions. Little portions. And yep. trust me, I've been to a lot of restaurants and they're going downhill fast. Yeah. And we've done videos on that and I've talked about it. There's yeah. very few places that I'll go. Mm -hmm. um, even some of the restaurants that I really, really enjoy have now started to fall into the same rut. And I've noticed that there's, prior to that, there was just less people. Mm -hmm. And then the portions got smaller and the quality, in my opinion, What do you guys think? Down. You think the quality of restaurants are going down? Now, don't get me wrong. There's some that are still fantastic and there's but plenty. There's but few, there's few less and less. a lot less. Yeah. All right. The outlook of the recession, though, still remains mixed, according to the New York Fed econ economics. The economy has a 56 percent chance of tipping into a downturn by June of next year. I think it's like 80 percent, but that's my opinion. <laughs> Bill, what do you think and what do you guys think of the job market? Are you confident? Like, say you wanted to get out of real estate. Like, oh, let's talk about realtors. Hey, forget about it. Let's talk about okay. realtors. All right, a lot of realtors are getting out of the field. It's not. This is not what the video is about, but because of the NAR lawsuit There's and the way- A lot of reasons, yeah. Because of interest rates, you know, well, and people are cutting back because of jobs. What These realtors, I know two of them that are becoming, one is becoming a bartender, the other one is working at a supermarket now. Right, it, those are the jobs that are more readily available, it seems like, you know, because I keep hearing the same things. Um, you know, people are getting out of real estate because it's the the lawsuit has changed the, the way we are going to do business here. And for some people, that was scary. For a lot of people, that never they weren't doing business to begin with. So now it's just made it even harder. Well, we're talking about the National Association of Realtors being sued and the commission yeah. thing, and we won't get into all that no. stuff. But that's what we're talking about, the NAR lawsuit. It goes into effect August 17th, and we will do yeah. a video on that as soon as Bill finally gets a buy a broker agreement that we could read it read yeah we're still waiting like I mean, the final have, rules yeah the rule we're not gonna have unfortunately this is another this is this is kind of where I was, the point is that people we don't have rules yet so it's and it's only you know a few weeks away from the 17th you know yeah so but we still don't have all the rules and and things they, they were I, most of the stuff that came out was about the punishments <laughs> <laughs> we don't have all the rules to follow yet, um, but it'll it'll come out and we'll do it. But that's going to, but there's a reason for this. It's going to affect everybody. You but know, it's jobs. Because it's jobs. And, Things and, are going to change. So a lot of realtors are getting out of the business, which now is affecting various groups. Think about that. 
continuing education. Yep. You know, now some, some schools don't even do in class anymore. Exactly. They're doing, it's because over. nobody's becoming a realtor. So right. that's jobs. Right. They're doing it online. They're doing it online. I've got to do my continuing ed. So now I, I hate sitting on the computer doing continuing ed. But now I've got to, they've recorded the class one time because they can't afford to pay the instructors. And, you know, now the instructors have got to go out and hunt but, the job. But now those people are going to be looking for the jobs that, yep. that other people are looking for too. Exactly. Exactly. So it's it's just so systemic. I just I'm hoping things don't get too much worse with the job market. It, it's it's you know I get it. We can't. We need to everybody because we tout this all the time that everybody needs to save money right now. You know, but you know it's tough right now. We, everybody's in kind of a pickle. Well, the whole thing is you know the the you know the. During the COVID, the great resignation or the quiet resignation, you know, people were quitting their jobs. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, you know, now companies are saying, hey, you have to come back to work or the officer, you're fired. And a lot of them are like, OK, when do you want me back? Yeah, because it's not so easy to get a job right now. No, um, the days of being easy to get jobs. It's, I think it's, it's over. It's over. Like I said, I look just to see what jobs are out there and you know, other than things that are like, like I saw nursing jobs were pretty prevalent. Um, but like, if you just look for bank jobs, things like that, at least in our area, we just don't have it. And I'm noticing, you know, there's less and less tellers at the bank now. And even in Taco Bell, you know, we go to, we we've go to, never been to Taco Bell, <laughs> but we go into Taco Bell. There's nobody in there. You, no. you go to like an iPad kind of thing, a tablet yeah. and you press what you want. And then somebody, we finally see somebody bringing out your food on a tray. Yeah. But the tablet, you know, there, that, that eliminated a job. Right. That tablet eliminated a job. And I read an article, we're not doing a video about it now, but that they're going to start taxing robots. Or, you know, if they have automated systems, they're going to oh, tax okay. automated systems so they can get some revenue because... You because they're not going to get the taxes from uh, employment. Employment. Okay. So everything is changing I don't think we're going in a good direction. I don't feel comfortable with everything that's going on. Um, I think we're gonna, we might have stagflation, you know, high unemployment and, you know, still prices going up. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. It's going to be a very interesting year. I know it's a election year, but I don't, like I said before, I, it doesn't matter who's going to be president. It's going to be a tough road. It's going to be a tough road. Yeah. I think the rest of 24 is going to be tough. The beginning, the first six months of 25 is going to be tough. Yeah. And I think who's ever um, becomes president is just going to blame it on the previous person running things. That's kind of the norm anyway. but Which is the norm thing yeah. until they get out of it. But that's it. We really need to know what you guys think. You know, you think the economy, the job market is good, or you think that we're heading for big trouble? You have anything to add? Nope, that's it. We appreciate you watching. Hey, do me a favor. Watch this video. I picked it out for you guys. It's a really good video. And do me a favor, subscribe, like, and share. It's greatly appreciated. It really helps out the channel. And we'll talk to you in the next one. Thank you. See you soon.